Yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's good. Greetings, my children. What brings you to my <clears throat> laboratory? Is it the dreaded plague, perhaps? Do not worry, for I have devised a genius cure for that affliction. Uh, now please, extend your wrists. Alright, so I'm, um, uh, full disclosure, this video was meant to come out on Halloween, because, you know, plague doctors and Halloween, they kinda fit together, but I was really sick on Halloween, which I guess sort of actually fits the video more, but whatever. I mean, Thanksgiving and Halloween, they're... They're basically the same, right? Anyway, today, I bring you a video about, uh, as you might have guessed, uh, plague doctors. Ooh, so, so spooky. Yeah, enough of that. But uh, beyond just plague doctors, I sort of want to touch on medieval medicine, just sort of as a whole, and compare different approaches to medicine from, like, around the world, so, you know, maybe we'd look at Europe, the most famous one, uh, some stuff in the Middle East, some stuff in Asia, uh, and you sort of compare and contrast them, you know, um, which will probably just equate to making fun of Europe, but, you know, let's start the video. First off, the plague. Ooh. So, what do people refer to when they say the plague? Um, well, or the Black Plague, specifically, or the Black Death, or, you know, whatever you call it. Um, well, honestly, it's kind of hard to tell, because there are three types of plague. There's bubonic plague, which you probably have heard of, there's pneumonic plague, and there's septicemic plague. The symptoms of bubonic plague include... <coughs> 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 Chills, weakness and fatigue, muscle aches, and swollen lymph nodes. Um, which is why it's called the bubonic plague. They they swell up and they're called they're called buboes. They're like really big. It's uh, not very pleasant from what I hear. The symptoms of septicemic plague include, but are not limited to, a fever, extreme weakness, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, shock, internal bleeding, as well as bleeding from the mouth, nose, and or rectum, and um, skin tissue, like turning black and, and dying, your fingers falling off. Septicemic plague can either be the first stage of plague or can develop from bubonic plague. And finally, pneumonic plague, the symptoms of which are high fever, vomiting, nausea, headache, weakness, shortness of breath, rapidly developing pneumonia, chest pain, uh, <coughs> cough, bloody or watery mucus, mm, pleasant, respiratory failure, shock, and um, a bunch of other unpleasant stuff. Oh, and uh, this can also spread from person to person, so... Uh... However, us humans, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty smart, pretty creative, so um, we, specifically the Europeans, uh, thought up some interesting cures that were meant to help uh, alleviate some of the symptoms. The problem was, though, uh, they were really bad at it. Maybe that's an unfair judgment, you know? Let's, um, let's take a look at l l some of these uh, attempted cures. Uh, 
Oh, sweet Jesus. So to start off with the less ridiculous treatments, uh, often those affected by the plague would be quarantined for 40 days, which my sources tell me is actually where the word quarantine comes from, meaning 40 in Latin. What's more, uh, plague doctors would often pop the buboes on a patient infected with the bubonic plague, which actually helped. Who'd have thought? Unfortunately, this is where we leave the realm of the somewhat reasonable and enter into the zone of the mind-bogglingly stupid, uh, at least in hindsight. I should preface this by saying that there's a reason that all of this seems so weird and frankly just idiotic to us, and that's because the foundation of their medicine was pretty much entirely wrong. There was no concept of germs or bacteria back then. Instead, they thought that diseases were caused by uh, the miasma or bad air. Basically, weird vapor ghosts that would come and be absorbed into you and cling to things and just wreak havoc on your body. Thankfully, we moved past that and we now know that b little viruses and diseases are actually what lead to infection, but uh, still, it's important to keep in mind when going into this. But without further ado, here are some of the more interesting plague treatments. There was putting a hen next to infected patients uh, because it was thought to draw the pestilence out. Uh, some people would crush up emeralds and precious metals and, like, inhale them or drink them. Others would drink their own urine or drink just pure vinegar or the pus from the buboes that were popped, because that seems healthy. Some people tried ingesting bones or snake skins, and then there's of course the classic of bloodletting, which is when you, the plague doctor would stab you in an attempt to bleed the ghosts out. Alternatively, this could also be done with leeches. Some people would sit by fires, or even better, in a sewer, also to sort of draw the infection out, hypothetically. And just a bunch more stuff that didn't really help. If anything, most of this probably made things worse. So, what does one do when they find that nothing they do is working or helping in any meaningful way? Well, you blame the Jews, of course, because... And actually, the reason for this was because most Jewish people would actually practice certain traditions, such as house cleaning or washing your hands, that meant that the Jewish population was much less affected by the plague. And most people's reaction to this was WITCHCRAFT! They must be poisoning Christian wells. It's so obvious. I mean, come on, just think about it. So yeah, a lot of Jews ended up being burned at the stake, which made things even, even worse, worse, worse. I'm I'm kind of getting tired of talking about Europe. What's what's going on in the Middle East right now? Well, I'll tell you what's going on in the Middle East. The Islamic Golden Age. An explosion of scientific and cultural and societal and, most importantly for this video, medical advancements. Now, they still didn't know about germ theory or um, much of our modern medical knowledge, and a lot of uh, medicine was still very much spiritual and religion-based, but still, considering the time period and what was going on in Europe, <clears throat> things were going pretty well. It was actually thanks to a lot of the writings that came out of the Islamic Golden Age that Europe was able to finally lift itself out of the Dark Ages. If you want some of the specific advancements that came out of the Middle East, 
they would include surgery, uh, specifically heart surgery, which, yes, did exist at the time. A lot of modern medical teachings and medical philosophy is founded on what came out of the Middle East. There's pharmacology, the first color-illustrated book on anatomy, and finally... Kitab al Hawi fi al Tib. I probably pronounced that wrong, but it is the comprehensive book of medicine, essentially. Oh, and uh, one more thing they had hospitals that provided universal health care. Evil <coughs> Democrat. Uh, we're starting to run out of time here, but uh, for one more thing, let's talk about um, Chinese medicine. Now, the one thing that's weird about the plague is that no one seems to be sure where it came from. Some people believe it originated in the East, while others believe it came from the West and it never actually affected China in the East, or barely affected them. But anyway, Chinese medicine, though not quite as advanced as Middle Eastern medicine, still had some interesting things of its own. There was a lot of spirituality involved, a big emphasis on qi and spiritual energy, though that's not really unique to China. Pretty much all of the world had that basic religious slash spiritual slash mystical foundation for their medicine. A lot of uh, writings on herbal remedies and uh, different medical practices came out of China, and yeah, a lot of a lot of pretty cool stuff. Now, thankfully, modern medicine came along and sort of shooed away the problem of the plague almost entirely. But note that I said almost. There are still some cases of plague in the modern day, though they're very rare. Uh, recently, I believe a few people in China actually got sick, but you shouldn't be worried. As I said, it's very rare that anyone will get sick today. Only around seven people are infected each year, and with modern medical techniques, it, it's certainly not fun, but it won't be nearly as bad as it was b back in ye olden days. So yeah, the, now you know a little bit about the plague and stuff. Um, do with that knowledge what you will. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, do whatever. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Oh, and, uh, while I was researching the Islamic Golden Age, I found this story about a king that got overthrown by rebels, specifically for the reason that he was too fat to perform his duties with dignity. And then, upon being kicked out, obviously he and his family were not happy, so they hired a medical practitioner, a Jewish medical practitioner, to put him on a diet, essentially, a very strict diet that included him getting his mouth sewn shut. Uh, a bit extreme, but hey, it worked, and he came back, and I guess the rebels were just like, oh, you're not fat anymore, cool, come on, come on back and start ruling us. Um, that really has nothing to do with, like, I mean, I guess it sort of has to do with medicine, but it's just like, I don't know, man. <laughs>